This episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Mac Weldon. With so much seriousness in the news lately, sometimes it's nice to step back from all that for a second and focus on what sparks joy. And for us, a tech news story that sparked joy when we first covered it was the Freedom Phone. We first learned of the Freedom Phone back in July when various conservative grifters like Candace Owens and Roger Stone started promoting it on their shows. And uh, Freedom Phone is the brainchild of Eric Finman, the uh, self-described world's youngest Bitcoin millionaire, who announced the phone via a ridiculous video posted to social media where he pitched it as a major conservative pushback against big tech. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's the MAGA phone. Ring, ring. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. <laughs> the MAGA phone. Uh, it's a phone that comes pre-installed with apps like Parler, OAN, Newsmax, etc. And it has its own uncensorable app store and supposedly super robust security features. Uh, details on any of this, uh, obviously very thin, uh, even on the Freedom Phone's official website. That's where, part of the security is you don't know anything. Yeah, about. exactly, because then obviously bad actors would be able to exploit something. So you don't tell anyone anything, mm -hmm. they can't know it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, even on the Freedom Phone's official website where you could buy one for $500, not even knowing the basic specs or how much onboard storage it has. You're just going in blind. Trust and, us, it's got enough. And these days with all those clouds in the sky, yeah. who needs onboard storage anyway? Don't worry about it. This phone is for not worrying. So there you go. Uh, people in the tech space, they were quick to point out that the Freedom Phone appeared to just be a particular Chinese smartphone that cost $120 on AliExpress and is notorious for its poor, poor security. And also uh, that the idea of an app store with no censorship was a recipe for lots and lots of malware among various other problems. Yeah, turns out you get your apps certified with Apple and Google for uh, legitimate reasons like yeah. security, security, not not just letting anyone upload viruses straight to your phone. Yeah, uh, this was essentially the Soldier Phone rebranded. Yeah, Soldier Phone's better though. I would go with the Soldier Phone. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we kind of forgot about the Freedom Phone, but recently the New York Times checked in on Eric Finman and his phone, and based on their reporting, it sounds like this thing that everyone said was an obvious grift is in fact an obvious grift. So let's read about how Eric Finman shifted from teenage Bitcoin millionaire to 22-year-old right-wing tech entrepreneur. He dove into politics. He said that by the age of 12, he considered himself a libertarian. <laughs> it was at a rally for Ron Paul, the former presidential candidate, when someone first told him about Bitcoin. But his politics shifted when Mr. Trump arrived on the national political stage. Quote, I drank the Kool-Aid in 2016, he said. Over the next several years, Mr. Finman said he became worried about what he viewed as Silicon Valley censoring conservative voices. He also spotted a business opportunity and other Republicans who shared his concerns. <laughs> so he aimed at the dominance of Apple and Google and tried to create a new right-wing smartphone. Quote, politics is the new national pastime, baby, Mr. Finman said. Even non-political things like a freaking pillow end up becoming political, he added, referring to Mike Lindell, the MyPillow founder, who has peddled lies about the 2020 election. I mean, he's he's spot on. This kid does have great business sense. Uh, yeah, he he sees a a wide open area for marks to buy products that they wouldn't otherwise yeah. care about unless they were targeted directly at them as some sort of freedom uh, or political statement. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I can't hate on this kid's hustle. Yeah, it's like the targeted T-shirts, and it's not like I feel bad for literally anyone spending five hundred dollars on this phone. Yeah. Anyway, the article then talks about how he hired some engineers to build a custom version of Android with all the signs that it's actually a Google product mm -hmm. removed. Yeah. Uh, and he installed this new operating system on phones that he bought from China, as we all know. And that choice of phone, of course, quickly was criticized yeah. all around. Uh, here's the article again. Quickly, news outlets reported that the Freedom Phone was based on a low-cost handset from Umi Digi, a Chinese manufacturer that had used chips shown to be vulnerable to hacks. Mr. Finman, who marketed the device as the best phone in the world, was on the defensive. In an interview in July, Mr. Finman admitted that Umi Digi made the phone, but still said he was 100% sure it was more secure than the latest iPhone. <laughs> Apple has tens of thousands of engineers. Mr. Finman said he employed 15 people in Utah and Idaho. Well, if you can't trust the Mormons and the potato farmers, who can you trust? I mean, that's the reason the FBI hires uh, disproportionately from the Mormon communities, because... They don't tell lies. They can't lie. They literally cannot lie. Yeah, so... 
Uh, it also turns out Finman was pretty unprepared for uh, the business of actually selling the Freedom Phone. <laughs> Are you surprised? Quote, Mr. Finman said he wasn't surprised by the criticism, but he was taken aback by the sales. That left him juggling responsibilities he hadn't planned for, including certification with the Federal Communications Commission and special rules for shipping devices with lithium batteries. He hired people from his hometown in Idaho to staff a makeshift customer service center, and he struggled to sort out sales tax issues. Within a month of the phone's release, Mr. Finman had a solution. Sell someone else's phone and act as the branding frontman. Just as Mr. Finman's political inspiration, Mr. Trump has sold Trump steaks and Trump vodka without running a cattle ranch or a distillery, Mr. Finman unburdened himself of the difficult task of actually managing a company that makes phones. When the going gets tough, bring in the 50-something-year-olds, Mr. Finman said in a recent interview. They can be the ones with sleepless nights. There's no ageism Man, in this company. This phone shit's hard. Yeah. Finally, a company that'll hire 50-somethings yeah. with no discrimination. The older, the better. Yes. We believe that engineers, they're like fine wine. Yeah. Anyone older than 50, they just have a little tinkering shop in their backyard where they mm -hmm. don't work, uh, you know, 80 hours a week. Their only friend is a cat and a goldfish. That's right. And they do the best work. They do. Sometimes the phones come to life and they do a little dance. And it might not really be happening. It might be the sleep deprivation, but it happens according to who you talk to. But yeah, basically after realizing how hard what he was trying to do actually was, he just entered into a partnership with an established company called Clear Cellular, who already sells a privacy-focused phone called the Clear Phone, which already comes with a custom Android OS that kind of just does everything he wanted the Freedom Phone to do. Yeah. The Freedom Phone is now, it's just a clear phone with American flag wallpapers and various conservative apps pre-installed along with the uh, Patriot App Store. Which is a good name. The pa Patriot App Patriot Store. Patriot App. I like it, you know? If yeah. anything else, it's a creative name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Finman, he's basically just the pitch man. He's the, the Billy Mays for this phone. He receives a cut of Clear Cellular's profits, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Clear Cellular's founder told the Times that Finman's strength is, quote, connecting with folks inside of the freedom community. Mm, yes, the freedom the, community. The, the freedom community. Yeah. I'm pretty big in the freedom community. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, though, the freedom phones that have shipped so far are the original model that's just a cheap Chinese phone with a custom OS. And, and while they did eventually release specs on their website, uh, well, here's what CNET had to say. The basic specs and technical details put the Freedom Phone nearly on par with a $200 budget Android phone. Despite Finman claiming that the Freedom Phone is comparable to the best smartphones, its hardware doesn't come close to premium phones like the Galaxy S21 Ultra or iPhone 12 Pro Max. On paper, it doesn't even seem comparable to the best budget phones. There are no details about the new version of the Freedom Phone that comes out in November or what makes it, quote, 10 times better. Uh, literally, you could go on... Amazon or something now and buy an unlocked uh, Pixel 5 for cheaper than this. And yeah, it'll be a, it's a damn good phone. That's the thing is like, phones are cheap now. If even you wait a year, you can get a, a, a current gen phone for 500 bucks. Yeah, and even like, I mean, even year old phones, two year old phones from Apple, Samsung, they're mm -hmm. still, as long as they haven't been used up a bunch, they're still pretty damn good. And you can get them for dirt cheap. Yeah. So paying five hundred dollars for a uh, freedom phone. Freedom phone seems like well, it's a status symbol, Elliot. You see, <laughs> <laughs> you whip out one of these bad boys down at the local biker bar, and uh, well, the uh, granny panties they start dropping. Obviously, that's true. But like, I wish they had gone overboard with like the skinning on it or something, or at least well, like, that'd at be least, too much work. At least, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already juggling all this other shit. You want Look, me to put skins on these phones? Elliot, you're not even going to be able to see the skin on the phone once you have it inside of an otter box. <laughs> it's like two inches <laughs> attached to the side of your belt. Yeah. Like, well, what's the point? <laughs> it's, yeah, good point. Yeah. Anyway, CNET, uh, th this article they wrote on it was supposed to be a review, but they, they ordered a Freedom Phone to test it and review it, but their order was inexplicably canceled. Wait, hold on. This doesn't <laughs> smell of freedom. Mm. This is going to one of the big tech companies. They, they, they do reviews. They're and, uh, review. yeah, despite the Freedom Phone, I guess, 1.0 supposedly having shipped already, good luck finding a review of it that isn't by a conservative influencer who is probably or definitely getting a cut of sales from people who use their sponsor code. Although, wait, hold on. Actually, this popular tech YouTuber, Mr. Who's the boss? 
Uh, he seems to have managed to get his hands on a Freedom Phone not long after they went on sale. And uh, what's the title of this review? Oh, do not buy the Freedom Phone. Yeah, the video covers everything that's already been said about this thing, but it is worth a watch if you want to hear it from a guy who reviews tech for a living. Uh, he also covers the fact that uh, tech support for the Freedom Phone is basically non-existent and how all the conservative influencers shilling uh, for the phone made $50 for every phone sold using their promo codes. He also points out uh, how despite Candace Owens saying that she'd switch to the Freedom Phone, her tweets all still say Twitter for iPhone. Um, but that's a security measure. Yeah. You don't want to let people know. That's all part of the Freedom Phone. But uh, who knows? Maybe the Freedom Phone 2.0, which is literally just a version of the Clear Phone with a couple uh, APKs pre-installed, uh, really is what finally breaks the lib stranglehold over the tech business. I mean, my favorite part about the Freedom Phone is that you only have to dial 9-1 to get a hold of the cops. And it's a special line, like when you have status on an airline. Mm -hmm. it, gets, it gets straight through. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, speaking of uh, the Freedom Phone... It's just one part of an apparently growing industry that markets really basic existing technology to paranoid conservative, conservative boomers at a huge markup. Uh, here's the latest example. We're not sure how you pronounce the name of this product. It's, it's spelled Q-U-X. Cox. And uh, the promotional materials on its website pronounce it like Quix. Cox. But uh, last week, one of its co-creators tweeted this out. Dear trolls and NPCs, knowing you would pronounce cucks as cucks, we went with the name because it also serves as a troll bait and switch to make a point. The real cucks are those who freely let big tech rape their data only to get sloppy seconds via Google ads. Bunch of crying emojis. They love those crying emojis. Uh, I'm sorry, but look, you... <laughs> Even if this was a troll, your company's still called cucks. Haha. <laughs> But you're the cuck for pointing it out. <laughs> I guess so. We've certainly cucked you now, haven't we? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, what is cucks, which managed to raise over $170,000 on Indiegogo? Must be pretty great. Well, here's their website. What is cucks? Quantum Q user experience, UX. Disruptive technology designed to change how we interface with the intergalactic computer network. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, let's see what else they have to say. Cux can access all content, live, video, audio, text, stores. Cux is the only UX with full access to the internet. Users determine their own online experience. URL scraping capabilities. It says scrapping. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, access to mainstream apps and platforms. All right. Uh, still pretty much completely in the We've dark. We reinvented America Online. Yeah. You know what boomers loved? America Online. They did. And they miss it. You could just, it, that's how America got online. If you wanted jokes, you clicked the joke button, mm -hmm. and it was there. You didn't have to go searching for all these websites. Yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful walled garden. Every, everything was right there in order. But uh, yeah, uh, none of that helps at all. We don't know what the fuck this thing is. And no. the more you read from this website, the more confusing it gets. You you, you think it would clarify well, things. Well, Elliot, that's the troll. He is, uh, you, you're just uh, constantly uh, being the butt of the joke. How, how deep does this cucks trolling go? Mm. But yeah, there's apparently some sort of like social video platform aspect to this as well. Uh, here's more of the website. Become a creator. Anyone can become a creator. Monetization ready. Paid twice as much as other platforms. Direct relationship with users and advertisers. Most comprehensive analytics available. No rigged algorithm driven search engine optimization. No censorship. Again, uh, yeah, a very vague. So you're doing like YouTube? What are you doing? But here, the this Boing Boing article here, it points out that the $150 Cux has the same dimensions and port layout as this generic Chinese streaming box that can be purchased wholesale on Alibaba for $15 per unit. So, um, yeah, mm, looks like it might be a very similar situation to the Freedom Phone in that regard. Um, the major difference is that the Cux website and original Indiegogo page, they don't really push the whole freedom, patriotism, MAGA aspect of it all. But uh, that's only until you look into the people actually behind the cucks. So one of the cucks' creators is the guy from the tweet that we read before. His name's Gavin Wentz, and he seems to be some sort of philosopher who has created his own entire field of study called existics, which is so incomprehensible that he's either an absolute genius or more likely just a total crackpot. But the other co-creator is Millie Weaver, a.k.a. Millennial Millie, a <laughs> former InfoWars reporter who for the past year has been a fountain of election misinformation and other nonsense on her YouTube channel. Uh, she seems to regularly have videos and tweets taken down for TOS violations. So... She's just like us. Marketing a new 
vaguely censorship-free, anti-big tech device, it's a perfect fit for her. She'll yeah. literally be like, censored again. Anyway, can't wait till the cucks comes out and saves us all. Have you been cucked by big tech? Come over to Cucks, where your cucking is not going to happen yeah. anymore. No cucking over here on Cucks. Wait until the Freedom people find out about Raspberry Pi computers. Oh, they're going to lose their mind. Yeah. The Freedom computer. Hey, if all you want to do is check an email and see a funny meme, well, we have the computer for you. As powerful as the latest MacBook Pro. It fits right in your pocket. Yeah, no, there's the Freedom PC. That is coming. Yeah. I hope we remember that you made that prediction, because I feel like this is a thing. Yeah. They're going to sell the Freedom computer. It's also a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Uh, here's the Daily Beast uh, with more on the Cucks creators. Weaver and Wentz were previously best known for their arrest in what their supporters cast as an attack from the deep state. Weaver managed to raise nearly $200,000 from her fans for a legal fund, only for court records to reveal that she was, in fact, arrested after an incident in which she allegedly stole her own mother's phone. Uh, the charges were later dropped. So yeah, I mean, more grifters grifting, raising two hundred dollars for a legal defense fund. Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars for a legal defense fund. And she uh, was—it was framed. She was like, "I was about to report some some crazy new story on the deep state, and suddenly I'm being arrested. What's going on?" And it just went around the conservative blog. Then who was phone? Yeah, and then like a day later, it's like, yeah, so she stole her mom's phone, and after the cops came and talked to him, the charges were dropped. <laughs> but, but now she's two hundred dollars richer. Two hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> richer. Sorry. And yeah, and she, but she clearly put that money into, no wait, no, she didn't because she raised another $170,000 for the Cucks box. And they're going to do another 170000 more for the Raspberry Pi Freedom PC. Yeah. I mean, yeah. say what you will about You can play people. any Nintendo game on it. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean. But they're all, like Mario is a freedom fighter and the, the little flag at the end of the Mario level is an American flag. That's right. Or it's an ISIS, ISIS flag and you pull it down and yeah. you send the American flag up. Uh, yeah. And the princess is in uh, Kabul. Yeah, the, that's another one, the Freedom Console. Yes. Coming soon. It's literally Soldier Boy is, is trailblazing for what these Freedom Fighters will then copy. He is. He's, a, he's an innovator. He is. All you have to do is look to Soldier Boy for what's coming next. Yeah. In a, the Freedom S community. Soldier Boy is always 18 months ahead of uh, the Freedom community. Yes. Yeah, so next, the, the, the Millennium Millie is going to be like, actually, uh, I'm the CEO of Atari now. <laughs> So, don't worry, we got some great games coming out. This one's called Cuck Hunt. You see, yeah. and, <laughs> this uh, little naked guy flies on the screen, and you shoot him. You guys love Contra? Well, we've got Iran Contra. <laughs> it's the same game. Yeah. Literally the same exact Except game. Except a lot more selling crack cocaine in the uh, ghettos of Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, Mike Lindell's Super Punch-Out, where you poke him in the armpit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, oh, God, I was attacked by Antifa. Antifa. Oh, jeez. But enough about ridiculous products marketed to conservatives. Let's move on to ridiculous products marketed to gamers who are even more oppressed than conservatives. Mm -hmm. And Razer is a company you can always count on for exactly the type of product that we love on this show. A product for gamers that seems so silly and impractical that you just you have to do a double take to make sure you're not actually reading an article on the satirical gaming website, <laughs> The Hard Drive. Meet the Razer Gaming Finger Sleeve. These are little socks, little cute tiny socks for your thumbs, or as Gizmodo put it, razor made thumb condoms for gamers. Uh, these aren't just for any old gamers though, Elliot. Uh, they certainly could be worn as a protective badge of pride for console gamers whose thumbs and index fingers are somehow absolutely wrecked from years of high intensity gaming. But the target audience here is uh, a very narrow one. Mobile gamers who take mobile gaming so seriously that they are looking for whatever edge over their opponents that they can get. Uh, Dignity be damned. Yeah. <laughs> they're already rocking Razer Kraken cat ears uh, as headphones, and they're already chew ch uh, chewing the Razer gum. So now their thumbs are about to get just so much better at tapping. You thought I was clashing clans before? Well, baby, watch out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the thumb. That's going to pwn your fucking ass. You know this would be great for? Uh, single people addicted to Tinder. Yeah, yeah, all that swiping. Uh, uh. I got these calluses. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. So uh, here's how Razer describes the thumb condoms on their website: Victory at your fingertips. 
Slip on and never slip up with Razer Gaming Finger Sleeve that will seal your mobile victory. Woven with high sensitivity silver fiber for enhanced aim and control, our breathable sleeves keep your fingers deadly cool in the heat of battle, so you'll always have a grip on the game. Basically, it stops your grubby little thumbs from getting all sweaty, which, I don't know, if you've ever gotten even, even a tiny bit of moisture on your screen, which you have, yeah. you know that this is a big problem. Sure. So... Okay. But the thing is, is like the the person using this is going to forget one time and grab a chip from the bag, and then those finger condoms are ruined. That's right. You're never going to get that orange dust out. Razer, uh, you just opened up an, a new opportunity for another product, which is the, the Razer Feed Bag. <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah. Sort of a... It's, it's exactly like the mask. It's, it's a mask, the, but it's just a, you put snacks in it. Yeah. And you can eat it like a horse. <laughs> yeah. While you game. Perfect. <laughs> Look, this is as silly as you uh, think it is, and even though it is, mobile esports is a growing field with lots of money to be made, and at just $10 for a pair of finger condoms, I mean, this could very easily catch on uh, among folks whose drive to win outweighs their drive to not look ridiculous. Plus, you're playing it at home. Like, no one's going outside and playing these games or at the train station or whatever. If you're, if you're competing on a mobile game, you have to be connected to that home Wi-Fi. Yes. You wouldn't want anything to mess up yeah. and ruin uh, a game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, some people might still prefer gaming with their thumbs, uh, just raw dogging it. Um, those are the real gamers. Um, but look, there's risks involved, and risks be damn. I'm raw dogging it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it just feels better. And, uh, you know, you can't perform uh, with even a thin layer of synthetic material between you and your partner, the phone. Um, so... It's an option. Uh, some yeah. people choose. It's like drummers who wear gloves. Like... Yeah, you know, your hands are probably nice, but uh, can you really get a feel for it? Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Anyway, we got more news for you coming right up, but it's time It's now. Legend of Zelda, but uh, in this one, Zelda's a man. Thank God. <laughs> we got more news for you coming right up, but it's time now to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Your style isn't one size fits all. It's about what suits your body and what suits the moment. So why not shop at a store that's personalized to your body and style? Introducing Stitch Fix Freestyle, a shop built just for you. Stitch Fix Freestyle is your trusted style destination where you can discover and instantly buy curated items based on your style, likes, and lifestyle. Whether you're looking for a brand you love or to try uh, a new one, a, at Stitch Fix Freestyle, you can shop hundreds of brands personalized to your size and fit. With styles for workouts to work wear, for lounging around the house, or for a night out on the town. Stitch Fix Freestyle has clothes for any occasion. Plus, there's no subscription required, and they offer free shipping, returns, and exchanges. Get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com newsday. That is stitchfix.com newsday to try Stitch Fix Freestyle. stitchfix.com newsday. And speaking of clothes, this episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon. You're a busy guy, so stop thinking about what to wear and just embrace the radically efficient Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. This is my daily wear. <laughs> the Daily Wear System is a selection of clothes rooted in smart design made with performance fabrics and built to work together. From breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear and beyond, Mack Weldon makes it easy for you to dress for work, leisure and play or wherever your summer takes you. We were first introduced to Mack Weldon via their underwear and socks, but this past year and a half has solidified our love of Mack Weldon's pants and shorts. Their extremely comfortable ace sweatpants and sweat shorts and their Sunday lounge pants, they're perfect for when you're probably spending most of the day at home, but you also want to be able to leave the house at a moment's notice and not look like a slob. I'm wearing my uh, ace sweatpants right now. Yeah, they are. The Sunday loungers are great for that. Like, they you are. can literally just never take that them That man's off. wearing slacks. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know how comfortable I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the good news is that at Mack Weldon's bottoms, they pair perfectly with Mack Weldon's tops. Whether it's their ultra soft Pima tees for keeping it casual or their silver net polos for classing it up a bit. Focus on what matters to you most this summer by saving time and wearing Mack Weldon products. Buy some time this summer with the Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Newsday and enter promo code Newsday. That is MacWeldon.com slash Newsday, promo code Newsday for 20% off. Mack Weldon, radically efficient wardrobing. All right, now back into the news with some crypto news. Oh. <laughs> Uh, now, we're not particularly bullish on cryptocurrencies ever truly replacing government-issued currency in a big way. 
But nevertheless, over the past couple of years, more and more vendors have started accepting cryptocurrencies for payments. So it was big news on Monday when it was announced that Walmart is partnering with Litecoin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The world's biggest retailer would be accepting Litecoin as payment for products and services. It was all there on a slick press release featuring quotes from Walmart's CEO, which the official verified Litecoin Twitter account tweeted out. And it led to an immediate huge spike in the price of Litecoin. But it was all bullshit. Wow. The Waltons with Litecoin? Lies and deception in the crypto space? I'm shocked. Yeah. Here's CNBC. Cryptocurrency Litecoin gave up a 20% gain and tumbled back to earth following a fake press release sent out by Globe Newswire that referenced a partnership with Walmart. Walmart spokesman Randy Hargrove confirmed that the press release is not authentic. He also said the retailer has been in touch with the Newswire company to investigate how the false press release got posted. And as for why the Litecoin official Twitter account would tweet out literal fake news about themselves, Litecoin claims that whoever was running their socials at the time basically just saw the press release and assumed it was legit like everyone else. Whoops. Why didn't I hear about this? Boy, I'm going to get in trouble if I don't tweet about it right now. But first, let me just set a uh, limit sale real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happened here appears to have been a very clear and clever uh, pump and dump by some nefarious actors who were looking to get Litecoin's price to shoot up so they could turn a profit. Pump and dumps have always been a big problem in the crypto world, especially with newer altcoins or shit coins. But uh, something like this happening with an established cryptocurrency like Litecoin doesn't do much to instill confidence that cryptocurrency is the future of money and not just a giant pyramid scheme that uh, we've all been forced to take seriously. And damn it, Litecoin was one of the one of the top uh, like. Seeming like, I mean, still, it's legit. It's just, you know, this was a bullshit statement. Uh, yeah. That appears to be a. It's a it's a solid second tier crypto. It's where you get the, the HODL meme from. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, what it does do, though, is justify all the calls for the crypto space to be more heavily regulated, though. So, uh, hey, great job, everyone. Yeah. Great. The SEC loves when things like this happen. They certainly do. Maybe they leaked it. Maybe. Yeah. This was is this all an inside from, job. Yeah, exactly. That's the real conspiracy. This is all Goldman Sachs and the SEC colluding to make crypto look bad. Exactly. Anyways, in other news, over on Twitch, a big problem for the last several months has been what's called hate raids, where streamers, often smaller, non-white, non-cisgender streamers, suddenly have their chat filled with hundreds of bots and trolls spewing all sorts of hate speech at the streamer. Uh, even in the best case scenario, this kind of thing completely derails the stream while the streamer has to try and ban all the accounts that suddenly showed up in their chat. Uh, for a lot of streamers, though, being called slurs by hundreds of random accounts all at once while they're just trying to game is a very distressing situation, which is intended to drive them off the platform and often does exactly that. Yeah, and especially a lot of the smaller streamers that this is happening to, they don't, like, have mods in their chat. Yeah. So they have to stop whatever it they're doing and, like... derails the whole fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's... This is terrible. This yeah. is terrible. Uh, this problem spawned entire guides for setting up on your own bots and, and tools to prep your streams for potential hate raids so that you can deal with them more quickly, uh, which is something that people shouldn't have to worry about. No. Uh, but the hate raid situation got so bad recently that streamers frustrated with Twitch failing to properly deal with it staged a one-day boycott of the service. And since then, Twitch seems to maybe be taking this more seriously because they've now sued two anonymous users for their roles in these hate raids. Here's Wired. Thursday's lawsuit, which was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California, targets two users identified only as Cruz Control and Creatine Overdose, whom Twitch believes are based respectively in the Netherlands and Vienna, Austria. Twitch in the suit says it initially took swift action by suspending and then permanently banning their accounts. However, it reads, they evaded Twitch's bans by creating new alternate Twitch accounts and continually altering their self-described hate raid code to avoid detection and suspension by Twitch. The complaint alleges that Cruz Control and Creatine Overdose still operate multiple accounts on Twitch under aliases, as well as thousands of bot accounts to conduct hate raids, and that both users claim in the lawsuit's words that they can generate thousands of bots in minutes for this purpose. Twitch alleges that Cruz Control is responsible for about 3,000 bots associated with these recent hate raids. On August 15th, the suit alleges Creatine Overdose demonstrated how their bot software could be used to spam Twitch channels with racial slurs, graphic depictions of violence against minorities, and claims that the hate raiders are the KKK. The suit also alleges that the defendants may be part of a hate raiding community which coordinates attacks over Discord and Steam. 
Get a fucking life! Ugh, the extent to which this legal action actually manages to scare off hate raiders remains to be seen, and uh, it honestly might not do much aside from getting these two hate raiders off the platform and clearing the way for others to take their place. Some people, for whatever reason, choose to spend their time on the internet trying to make other people's time on the internet as miserable as possible. And look, that's been the case forever. Uh, but at least there's websites like Hate Raid Response that have lists of tools and guides for dealing uh, with them when they happen and not giving the trolls the satisfaction of giving, getting what they want. Um, it seems as though Twitch should be able to like analyze patterns and uh, specific terms in chat and spam stuff and be able to deal with it more actively. It's been going on long enough that, yeah... And and they, look, maybe they are working on it, but it's you would think they would have dealt with it in a more direct way a lot sooner because uh, this kind of ruins the platform for a lot of people. Yeah. Though barely ever the, the big people that Twitch really, really cares about. Mm -hmm. So anyways, speaking of garbage platforms, let's check in on the latest ways that Facebook has been revealed to be bad for humanity. Uh, earlier this week, we talked about how Facebook's own internal documents acknowledge that Instagram is harmful to the mental health of its teenage user base. <laughs> they admit it. <laughs> <laughs> they admit it. But uh, the hits keep on coming. Uh, for example, the New York Times reported last week that despite Facebook making a big deal a few years back about sharing its data with misinformation researchers so they could study how misinformation spreads online, uh, they haven't actually been sharing all the data that they said they would. In fact, you could say that Facebook has been misinforming Misinformation researchers. Uh, here's the times. But the information shared by Facebook had a major flaw, according to internal emails and interviews with the researchers. The data included the interactions of only about half of Facebook's US users, the ones who engaged with political pages enough to make their political leanings clear. Not all of them, as the company had said. Facebook told the researchers that data about users outside of the United States, which has also been shared, did not appear to be inaccurate. Quote, this undermines trust researchers may have in Facebook, said Cody Buntain, an assistant professor at the social media researcher at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, who is part of the group of researchers known as Social Science One, who have been given the user activity information. A lot of concern was initially voiced about whether we should trust that Facebook was giving Social Science One researchers good data, Mr. Buntain said. Now we know that we shouldn't have trusted Facebook so much and should have demanded more effort to show validity in the data. That is your problem. You trusted Facebook. You trusted Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, of course, says that this is all just an honest mistake. Whoops. Yeah. But regardless of whether that's true, they have really screwed over these researchers um, from that article. Several researchers on the call complained that they had lost months of work because of the error the people on the call said. One researcher said doctoral degrees were at risk because of the mistake, while another expressed concern that Facebook was either negligent or worse, actively undermining the research. I would uh, tend to agree that they probably were doing this on purpose uh, and then would apologize later for, I mean, basically exactly what they said, like, oh, oops. Uh, quote, from a human point of view, there were 47 people on that call today, and every single one of those projects is at risk, and some are completely destroyed, Megan Squire, one of the researchers, said in an interview after the call. Can you imagine you're getting your fucking PhD, you're and like, you're given bad data? It's almost ready, and they're yeah. like, oh, by the way, everything that you used as data, it's flawed. Yes. So, I don't know, find something else to start over or whatever. Not my problem. <laughs> uh, this is the second time in just a few weeks that researchers studying Facebook data have discovered big problems that suggest Facebook isn't being as transparent with them as they say they are. Last month, it was reported that CrowdTangle, Facebook's analytics tool that is used by researchers, was missing tens of thousands of posts from the days before the January 6th Capitol riots. Hmm. How convenient. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal revealed this week that uh, something pretty much everyone already assumed is in fact true. Facebook has a system set up to allow its high-profile users to skirt the rules that it applies to all of its other users. Oh my gosh. They admit it. Uh, <laughs> from the reporting, Mark Zuckerberg has publicly said Facebook Inc. allows its more than 3 billion users to speak on equal footing with the elites of politics, culture, and journalism, and that its standards of behavior apply to everyone, no matter their status or fame. In private, the company has built a system that has exempted high-profile users from some or all of its rules, according to company documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. The program, known as CrossCheck or XCheck, was initially intended as a quality control measure for actions taken against high-profile accounts, including celebrities, politicians, and journalists. Today, it shields millions of VIP users from the company's normal enforcement process, the documents show. Some users are whitelisted, 
rendered immune from enforcement actions, while others are allowed to post rule-violating material pending Facebook employee reviews that often never come. Uh, continues, at times, the documents show, XCheck has protected public figures whose posts contain harassment or incitement to violence, violations that would typically lead to sanctions for regular users. In 2019, it allowed international soccer star Neymar to show nude photos of a woman who had accused him of rape to tens of millions of his fans before the content was removed by Facebook. Whitelisted accounts share inflammatory claims that Facebook's fact checkers deemed false, including that vaccines are deadly, that Hillary Clinton had covered up pedophile rings, and that then-President Donald Trump had called all refugees seeking asylum animals, according to the documents. A 2019 internal review of Facebook's whitelisting practices marked attorney-client privileged found favoritism to those users to be both widespread and not publicly defensible. Quote, we are not actually doing what we say we do publicly, said the confidential review. It called the company's actions a breach of trust and added, unlike the rest of our community, these people can violate our standards without any consequences. They admit it. Internally. In private. They admit it in private. Yes. So, again, no big surprises here. And, I mean, even calling it a breach of trust at this point, it's kind of laughable that they would think that they are violating our trust considering how untrustworthy this company has proved itself to be time and time again they, over the last several years. It, like, if you just took the company literally at face value, you can't trust it. But Facebook said... But, 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 but Facebook said they treated all the users equally. Well, the, the funny part about this is, like, for the wrong reasons, peop, there are people who have been kicked off for, for good reasons who would pr definitely be upset by this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they got to the right... Uh, they're going to have the right response for the wrong reasons. So yeah, you've heard us say it a million times, but this shit, it rots your fucking brain. You should get off Facebook if you haven't already. Yes. What else is there to say? Anyways, Ditch Facebook. That's our episode. There was, a, there was an Apple event, but it's not even really worth yeah, I looked covering. Yeah, I looked into it because, you know, me, big Apple fanboy now. But I uh, mean, the new phone's great. It's, it, lo it looks great if you're, it, again, it's, it's more geared towards... Um. Uh. Uh. Doing video, like high-end video production with the, your phone. There's one video feature on it that I thought was cool as fuck. Uh. It basically does autofocus portrait mode in video. Yeah. And so you can do it depending on where you're looking. You at. can do it after the fact. Yeah. Like you can, while editing your video, you can choose to focus it on the foreground or background. You can rack focus in post. Yeah. There's it's a, very cool. There's a bunch of cool new features on it. But and then there's uh, uh, yeah. like adaptive refresh rate which is probably really really good for battery life where yeah. like it bumps down to like 60 hertz yeah or if you're just like reading the news or whatever and you're not scrolling it it drops down to like 20 hertz yeah and it only bumps up higher when there's movement on your screen so yeah that's um, interesting but other than that i was like all right cool i mean i'm sure it's a great phone but yeah there's <laughs> like all this margin there's the, the camera bump is now fucking Huge. It's yeah. like half the back of the camera. Uh, there's some su some stuff with like the Apple Watch that is interesting. Uh, it has like more haptic features for health and stuff like that. I have an Apple Watch. I don't wear it all the time. I only wear it when I go mountain biking hmm. or whatever. Because well, now it, it has a biking mode. So yeah, but well, that it'll just be like, hey, look, look, look at the exercise you're getting. Yeah. But uh, the reason I got it is because if I had a bad crash and was alone in the mountains or something. Call the police. It, yeah, it calls call the emergency numbers for yeah, you. That is, that it's is a sense. very boomer uh, it's forward a, uh, idea. life alert. It literally is. That's why I got it. I was like, yeah. look, if I'm going out alone, you know, and I get tackled by a cougar, and she, and it's not a 60-year-old woman, uh, don't call the cops on that one. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it calls if something bad happens. Like, yeah. your heart rate, like, goes to a certain level or whatever, which is great. It's a great safety feature if you are a very active person. So um, there were some new features on the, the stuff for that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, kind of just little incremental changes. That, and yeah. that's kind of how it's been. You know, last year was the big year. It was 5G. And half the population thought it was going to poison them. So maybe it wasn't a, a big hit. But uh, that was the big progression in uh, this technology. Meanwhile, Google straight up reviewed the new Pixel without even, like, doing a big event for it. Like I'm really? sure, I think they are doing an event, but they literally they revealed because every year like it gets leaked. And this yeah. year they literally just leaked the phone themselves. Like there's a website set up for it, and then uh, sure. I think next week Microsoft's having their Surface event, which could be interesting. But great, can't wait to see what all the coaches in the NFL are using this year. <laughs> can't use this damn thing. <laughs> <Duh>! <laughs> No! <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Uh, be sure to check out our previous episode over here, including uh, uh, just 
us talking about the Met Gala and a bunch of other random stuff on uh, the, the first episode this week and a new episode of Weekly Weird News. Check both of those out. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff, and we'll see you soon for News Dump and uh, another episode of Weekly Weird. Bye-bye.